Great. Well, first, I want to welcome ACC Senior Services and this great team and resident to our 6060 tour, which is so exciting for Leading Age California. We're kicking off our 60th anniversary with 60 conversations with 60 communities for our 60th anniversary. So we're just so excited. It's uh, already been a lot of fun getting to talk to uh, members of the staff, as well as residents in various communities. And we've just heard amazing things about our members and our residents. So we're just so excited to have you a part of it. Uh, and we'll look forward to hearing all about ACC Senior Services and of uh, Jeff, of your story and some of your comments. Uh, so with that, I'm going to ask Derek. Uh, Derek is also a distinguished member of our board of directors at Leading Age California. So we're thrilled that he's part of our leadership. Um, but I want you to talk today a little bit about ACC Senior Services, and then I know that we'll be going around the room to the others. Thank you, Jeannie, for uh, allowing us to showcase ACC Senior Services. Uh, back in the 60s, it's a time when two groups of Asian Americans, namely the Japanese Americans and Chinese Americans, decided to let go of their differences and work together for the good of their family members. And the decision was to build a high quality skilled nursing facilities for loved ones in Sacramento. So with that, uh, they have incorporated ACC Center Services in 1972, and it was almost 50 years ago. So this is a brief history about how ACC started, and I'm going to turn to Melanie Seeger the Chief Operating Officer at ACC to talk about the history as to how ACC Care Center started. Um, I came to work at ACC in 2011 to the, to the um, then nursing home, as they called it. Um, we've since renamed to ACC Care Center in May of 2011. And then Tamara joined me in July of 2011. So we looked around and really saw that there was a need in the community for post-acute services. Um, our nursing home up until that point had really been long-term care for people that needed a place to live as they aged. And, and that was sensitive to needs of Asian Americans in terms of language, in terms of meal preparation, um, I remember when I came to ACC, we were doing the calendar in three different languages, which was very different. So I could tell you about all of the wonderful things that ACC Care Center has done in terms of, you know, national awards that we've won. Um, we've been named <clears throat> year after year as one of the top nursing homes in the United States. But when I look at what makes us different, you know, what sets us apart, I think is the commitment from our family members, from our board of directors, from our stakeholders in the community that really have allowed us to do some exciting things. Um, but I have to tell you that what I think is the secret sauce with the ACC is the commitment and the longevity of our staff. Yes. Um, so as Melanie has mentioned, um, when we think about uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it is important for our staff to get to the apex of that pyramid, and that is self-actualization. ACC positions itself to make sure we support our staff hand in hand. I'm very happy to be the administrator and to see even our peers, our other staff members moving from the dietary department into the nursing department because they are becoming CNAs and some of the CNAs going back to school and becoming LVNs. I believe in empowering our staff and if the staff is engaged, we end up with the nucleus of our quality, uh, which is better outcomes and that is what we all strive for. Yes. Um, so as you know, uh, COVID and uh, we got the recommendations from uh, the guidelines from CDPH to come up with cohorting measures. So the red zone, the yellow zone and the green zone. 
Now for a 99 bed facility, those were a lot of beds, but also we were getting a lot of feedback from the hospital, our preferred providers, that they wanted to get more residents into our facility. So through uh, working with leading age and then becoming our advocates, um, we were able to have a dialogue with uh, CDPH and also continuing care licensing, where we talked about the idea of using our assisted living facility and surging our skilled nursing a license um, to 16 of those apartments. Uh, fast forward, we got the approval and we were successfully able to transfer 16 residents to our assisted living facility. Now that took a lot of planning. It took a lot of you know, support from our, our family members and also for our residents. Today, I'm happy to tell you they are thriving in that environment. But as we are thinking about our COVID recovery plan, life now, we after the vaccine, uh, we are looking at having our residents come back to uh, ACC care center that met the guidelines uh, from CDPH. It is called a visitor infection program, VIP, and everybody loves it. And even as we are transitioning into thinking about, you know, in-person visitation, we're still having family members who would want the VIP um, lounge visitation to still continue. We'll speak to this. We do have point of care testing devices. Um, one is called a uh, Gen Expert. We are able to do a PCR test in the building in 35 minutes. Uh, and so that has augmented our efforts to be able to identify, isolate our residents and start that treatment right away. So having those unique point of care devices, the Piccolo machine, um, you know, our Gen Expert, which actually does the flu, the RSV and also the COVID test, uh, it really puts us in a really good position to continue to care fiercely uh, for our residents. Thank you, Tamara. And I do want to uh, start what I had to say by thanking our management team and by thanking uh, the founders of ACC. Uh, they've left a legacy that has been a real honor for me to serve. Um, the team building here is what is really our secret sauce from my perspective, because we have a team that is absolutely uh, fierce when it comes to making the appropriate changes, when it comes to adapting new ideas. And uh, I can tell you, we, um, we don't really sit idle for any length of time. We're always doing new things and trying new uh, ideas. Um, our, our primary focus is, uh, as has been uh, stated before, family connection for our residents because we feel like, you know, especially as we get older, that becomes more and more the center of our lives. Um, socializing uh, among the residents is another magical thing that can occur. And we really hope that uh, people are able to do as much of that as possible. And then, of course, activities. Um, having... I think at one count, it was over 200 activities a month where people can be busy and hopefully spend their lives doing some things that are somewhat purpose-driven as, as, as well as entertaining. So we like to see both of those things happening. And um, all of this is occurring with a lot of expertise uh, from a medical perspective uh, with the latest in point-of-care testing um, like we're talking about, where we can do a lot of our lab work right here. Um, and um, we find that is much more efficient. It's still very accurate, and it, it really gives us an opportunity to uh, find out about our residents in a very timely fashion. Um, as was mentioned before, we have an ultrasound machine, so we can test for blood clots and avoid unnecessary treatments for anticoagulation, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, we also, you know, of course, we have the mobile mobilized services that we do um, for lab and x-ray and ultrasound. A word that I give to staff because of the appreciation that I have, it's called the Boots on the Ground Award. And it's a, a perpetual plaque that's hanging up in the hallway. Um, and people are recognized for their high level of 
really granular caregiving. And I, beyond that, I don't come up with a lot, Tamara. <laughs> and what brought me to ACC was a wound on my foot. I have come a long way with uh, ACC and physical therapy. And without that, my life would not be where it is today. So I appreciate it. Hmm. Wow, beautiful. This was incredible. The, the, um, the stories, the history, the great work that you've done there, both from the clinical development and the residential living, the quality of life, the focus on your workforce, just really I'm fascinated at the cultural part of what you were talking about, because I think that there historically so many communities kind of have here's the way we do things and, and not really being relevant to just the different nuances of, of, of any culture. And in your case, the Asian cultures, I'd love to just hear a couple specific things that you have done to address. Uh, I think you said both the Japanese culture and the Chinese culture. And I just am, fascinated by that and, and congratulate you for the for the vision from day one it felt like and what are, I also want to know what did a, what does ACC stand for ACC stands for Asian Community Center okay so when we incorporated we call the Asian Community Center of uh, Sacramento Valley Inc and so a few years back we decided to rebrand to ACC Center Services because we started as really Asian based uh, throughout the years, we have evolved and we have uh, different uh, programs and services for different ethnic groups. And also as uh, a president and CEO at ACC Senior Services since um, 2018, I make a point to make sure that we embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oh, goodness. Well, this is just incredible. Um, really a great conversation with all of you. And so happy, Jeff, that you were part of the conversation in your role in the community for, for uh, some time. Thank you.